Today, I'm announcing the unsealing of a three count indictment, charging Sean Combs with interstate transportation. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused and coerced victims to fulfill his desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Baby, the day y'all have been waiting for has finally arrived. Diddy was finally arrested on the night of September 16th in New York and charged with a few things, including racketeering, conspiracy, fraud or coercion, among others. But guess what? Reportedly, he's got more to deal with than just his arrest because Kim Porter's family is also allegedly officially on his neck and his son Quincy is allegedly also going to cooperate with the feds against his father. My oh my, there's definitely Definitely no getting out of this one for Diddy. He's done the done done done. Okay, like I said, Diddy was arrested in Manhattan roughly six months after federal authorities raided his luxurious homes in Los Angeles and Miami. And the plot just thickened, loves. Prosecutors said in court papers that they had interviewed more than 50 people and witnesses and expect the number to grow. They also said they would use financial travel and billing records, electronic data, and communications and videos of the freak offs Diddy was hosting to prove their case. Basically, based on the case the prosecutors are building, a conviction on every charge would require at least 15 years in prison with the possibility of a life sentence. But knowing Diddy, of course he was going to fight this and he actually pleaded not guilty and even wanted bail. So I got the details of the letter from the defense seeking Diddy's release and the bail package outlined several things the defense proposed, including a $50 million bond. As per the letter, Diddy's mother, his sister, the mother of his oldest daughter and his three adult sons all agreed to be co-signers, according to the proposal. The bail package said Diddy's traveling would be limited to Florida and New York to attend court, meet with his counsel, and attend medical appointments. In addition, it noted that Diddy and his children had already surrendered their passports to his counsel following the raids at his Miami and Los Angeles properties. But following a back and forth between the defense and prosecutors, the judge denied Diddy's bail request. And this only means he'll remain in custody and be sent to jail while he awaits his trial. Based on reports, Diddy is being held by himself at the special housing unit in the Metropolitan Detention Center of Brooklyn until his next court appearance. The special housing unit is separate from the general prison population and is used to house inmates who require additional protection, among other reasons. Honey, this arrest has also uncovered a few more details about Diddy, making this situation even worse. For instance, Diddy's bombshell 14-page indictment has been unsealed, and in it, he is accused of heinous crimes. In the grand jury indictment revealed on September 17, federal agents reported finding not only 1,000 bottles of baby oil, but also three AR-15s at Diddy's residences in Miami and Los Angeles. Before I even continue, can you believe that they found 1,000 bottles of baby oil? Child, Diddy had to have been tapped in with the CEO of Johnson & Johnson, and bro was probably getting trucks full of baby oil sent to his house monthly. Like he was personally keeping Johnson & Johnson in business, because 1,000 bottles of baby oil is wild. Anyway, these these items were reportedly part of a larger operation involving Diddy's freak-offs, where he allegedly hosted wild fueled parties. The indictment also details the use of these supplies in extravagant gatherings, including controlled substances, extra linens, and lighting. It also goes on to detail how Diddy coerced women and others around him to fulfill his desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. He's also accused of using his staff, money, and influence to build his business empire and ultimately a criminal enterprise where he took part in a bunch of crimes not limited to forced labor arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. It also notes how on numerous occasions from at least in or about 2009 and continuing for years, Diddy mistreated women by, among other things, dragging, throwing objects at, and killing them. In addition, the indictment went on to say that Diddy lured women in under the pretense of a relationship and forced them to engage in freak-offs using physical and other forms of force. The freak-offs were also described as elaborate and produced intimate performances that Diddy allegedly arranged, directed, master during and often electronically recorded. Then it notes how Diddy's staff often booked hotel rooms and stocked them in advance with 
baby oil, lubricant, sheets, and extra lighting. Apparently, the freak-offs could last for days, and Diddy, together with the other people involved, would often receive IV fluids to recover from whatever they were using. Well, guess what? Even with everything that has come up, Diddy is still maintaining that he is innocent, and his lawyer, Mark Agnafilio, has criticized the prosecution, calling them unjust, saying he is an imperfect person, but it's not criminal. To his credit, Mr. Combs has been nothing but cooperative with this investigation, and he voluntarily relocated to New York last week in anticipation of these charges. Please reserve your judgment until you have all the facts. These are the facts of an innocent man with nothing to hide, and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. I'm not sure innocent is the right word to use here, but Diddy and his lawyer insist that he is innocent. Well, during a press conference, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said that they are not done with Diddy and the investigation is ongoing, and he urged those with any additional information to come forward. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. Again, I'm not sure how Diddy's legal team plans to navigate this, but I definitely cannot wait to see how it all unfolds. Moving on. Allegedly, if there's a child that's reportedly done with all of this, it's Quincy. I have even seen sources alleging that he might be willing to cooperate with the feds or is already working with them. What's more, Quincy and his biological father, Albie Shore, have reportedly been spending a lot of time together. The two have reportedly put their strained relationship behind them and are becoming closer. An insider shared that Quincy Brown, born to Albie Shore and the late Kim Porter, and his dad have been talking more and doing what's needed to make up for time lost during their estrangement. They were even recently spotted together at the White House for an event. Now, this is all alleged at this point, but sources are saying that Quincy told the feds how Diddy really treated Kim Porter behind the scenes. Quincy is one of the few people who saw what his mother went through with Diddy. And since feds are hitting Diddy with Rico, they want evidence on everything and all the women that Diddy has even been associated with. Remember, even before Diddy's arrest, Al B alluded a few times to his distrust of Diddy. For instance, there was a time Al remembered the moment he found out Kim had been pronounced dead by writing. I just found this footage from this morning I learned of at Lady KP's aka hashtag Kim Porter's death and now it ripped the soul from my physical body. I do know very clearly that hashtag Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some BS. Really? This is where I get in trouble. Albie actually tagged Diddy in the post to make sure Diddy saw how he thinks he was responsible, adding, we just celebrated our son at Quincy's New Deal and Christmas special with at Netflix, and she was in fantastic health, as well as laughing seeing me and at Diddy's mutual exchange at the theater. I'm going to leave it here. In another instance in November 2021, Albie claimed that in the time leading up to Kim's death, she was running from someone or something, and that he told her to call the FBI. Then shortly Shortly after uploading the post, Albie edited the last part of the caption and removed any mention of the FBI and said that Kim was running a marathon, but fans already clocked what he was trying to say. More recently, in March 2024, he insinuated that Diddy played a role in his 2022 coma, and he even said that he was working on a documentary that is going to shock the world. We are going to be producing the Albie Shore Life Story. So hold on to your, hold on to your britches, and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. <laughs> That same month, after Homeland Security raided Diddy's homes, Albie urged Quincy to come home while captioning a throwback photo alongside Quincy, letter to my son, come home, the door is wide open, you're safe here, son, I love you, pops, you're biological. Okay, I know that Quincy previously wrote an open letter scolding Albie for not being in his life growing up, and even questioned the importance of a biological relationship. Part of his open letter read, as far as my biological father goes, the spitting image is all I have taken from him. Throughout my life, I've always wondered about him, where he was, what was he doing? 
doing? And most importantly, was he even thinking about me? The absence of my father has given me a better understanding of what type of man I am going to be. I am grateful for my mom's love, support, guidance, and for her strength. But with all these receipts that are coming to light against his father, especially about Kim, Quincy is now not just willing to work with Al B, but with other members of Kim's family. Plus, there were actually reports not so long ago that Kim's family was seeking legal advice and was in pursuit of hitting Diddy with a lawsuit for wrongful death because they had physical evidence to support their case. Reportedly, with Diddy's arrest, Kim's family is more confident that they will also get justice for Kim. I mean, they are already aware of the speculation that contrary to what was reported, Kim was not found unresponsive in her bed, but she was discovered on the bathroom floor. And if they found her in her bed, then she was strategically placed there. In fact, the original coroner who conducted the first autopsy on Kim suspected foul play with the amount of a certain toxin that was found in her system. But he was allegedly fired and replaced by another coroner who ruled her death as lobar pneumonia. And what I find really weird is that this coroner took two weeks to conclude that Kim died of pneumonia and assumed soon as people started questioning Kim's death a while back, the first coroner passed on. Something else is that Kim's last call was reportedly at 2.43 a.m., but she was found later that morning at 11 a.m. Now, there have been a bunch of other things that have come up about Kim since Cassie filed her lawsuit, and Kim's family is reportedly banking on law enforcement to bring all this to light. Well, there could be hope after all, because when U.S. Attorney Damien Williams was asked about how many other people may have been affected, he clearly said that they are working on getting justice for all the affected, and that possibly includes Kim. So far, the number of people interviewed and questioned is 50, and the prosecutors have said that that number is likely to grow. Look, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Um, I can't tell you why it took so long. I think the, the, the better focus is on the fact that we are here today. Um, and we are committed to making sure that justice is done. I mean, I'm just dying to know your thoughts on how all of this has unfolded. Is it finally the end for Diddy? Do you really believe that Quincy could be working with the feds? And do you also believe that Kim will also finally get the justice she deserves? Sound off in the comments section below.